Divinity and Godhood is nothing strange to the world of Dragon Ball. Ever since the beginning, Goku has been interacting with divinity in some way, shape, or form. From holy lands to holy waters to actual deities, it has always played a key role in the franchise. Goku is even formally offered the job of Kami at the end of the original Dragon Ball. But while not every god is a fighter by trade, most gods are either powerful or useful in some capacity. In fact, the very nature of being a god invokes a level of respect in and out of the universe. Universe. While there are many deities in the series, the ones that are present certainly leave a lasting impression. However, even though scaling the gods is a tad bit easy compared to other groups in the show, I still guarantee that you will find some fascinating information in this video, as I won't just mention your standard god characters, but I'll also include some characters with divine key like Goku and Vegeta. So without further ado, let's rank the gods in the Dragon Ball franchise from weakest to strongest. Go on, what are you waiting for? Okay, then I'll try again. <laughs> <laughs> Korin is a deity who lives at the top of Korin's tower, located right underneath the lookout. He's an immortal cat and is at least 800 years old when he makes his introduction in Dragon Ball. While little is known about him, he is actually a legendary figure amongst the warrior world, hailed as the god of martial arts. This frequently leads to surprise and disbelief for those who meeting him for the first time as his appearance has yet to attain the fame of his reputation. Though, according to Dai Zenshu 7, Korin originates from the other world and was sent to Earth to assist the Kami of Earth, which is a holy position held by a pure hearted mortal selected either by Mr. Popo or a successor chosen by the previous Kami of Earth. The young Master Roshi was the first one of many to climb the tall Korin tower and train under the legendary Korin. It took him three years to catch Korin and obtain the sacred water. While Korin isn't really strong compared to the other gods on this list, his knowledge is very useful as he knows knows how to produce the most important thing in the Dragon Ball universe, and that's Senso Beans. Also, apparently there is one key trait that makes him very useful is that he could sense power levels better than most characters. As when Goku comes out the time chamber, he meets Korin and shows off the fruits of his training. There Korin comments that he is still isn't strong enough to beat Cell. So if it's worth noting, cats are canonically more accurate than scouters apparently. Yeah, come on! We want the same training you gave Goku, Kami! Please listen carefully then. I taught... Goku... NOTHING! That's what I taught him! <laughs> <laughs> There is something very fitting that just like the placement on this list, Kami is a character who geometrically is located right above Korin's tower, right in the heart of the earth. The god or Kami of earth oversees everything. Now it must be noted that as the video goes on, I'll be grouping characters who are similar in power in one placement. So while the earth had many gods in the past, they're more of overseers, and their jurisdiction is limited to the role of supervisor. However, that doesn't mean they have no supernatural abilities or powers. They in fact have many of the powers associated with gods, including the ability to see and sense events around the world, to travel and guide souls to the other world, and to be a general protector of the people. They also can hear the prayers of the mortal men. This gives a way for a funny scene during the World Tournament arc where Krillin is praying to God that he isn't matched with Goku in the first round, and Piccolo smirkingly remarks to Krillin that he is basically talking to Dende. So we can't really call this a ranking video without really discussing which Kami was weaker. Now out of all the three, Guru was very old and feral. However, it can be argued he was a super Namekian at his time and thus one of the strongest characters on this list. Although from the time we have seen him, he could barely stand up. His old age granted him special powers on the other hand unlocking people's hidden potential. Dende, like Kami, belongs to the Dragon Clan, possesses the special powers of helping others, but he isn't the fighter type. While his potential was unlocked and can be argued to have a higher power level than Kami, his lack of knowledge of martial arts makes him weaker than Kami who at one point trained Kid Goku. So I think Kami is the strongest planet guardian that we have seen. Also, it is worth noting there was past Guardians of Earth, however, there is no way to actually power scale how strong they are as we have never seen them in action. Don't 
give us that rubbish. How can we not know ourselves? I know myself better than anybody. Oh, is that a fact? So you know yourself, do you? How come you don't know that you are weak? Oh, would you like to... A good rule of thumb is to make sure your bodyguard is always stronger than you. A bad rule of thumb is to never let your bodyguard actually do anything. Mr. Popo, surprisingly, is stronger than Kame. He mops the floor with a Goku who just defeated King Piccolo. His battle power is revealed to be almost as high as Raditz during the Saiyan Saga. He also blocks Goten and Trunks in an anime filler scene during the Buu Saga. In every medium, Mr. Popo is depicted as someone stronger than he has any right of being. Goku claims he was trained by Kami during the 23rd Budokai, but maybe he should have stuck around with Mr. Popo for a bit longer. While it is debated whether Mr. Popo is in fact a deity or not, he is internally bound to serve and be a caretaker to the Temple of Kame. He holds immense knowledge in fighting and has lived for as long as ever. And like I said, in the Daizenshu, it was stated that he came from the other world to assist all the Kames. Now down you go! Huh? <laughs> <laughs> King Yemba, also known as Enma, is based on an actual deity in Japan. He is the man who judges the dead and decides if they go to heaven or hell. A pretty big deal if you ask me. His authority and position is immediately indicated to the viewer once you see how Kami, the god of earth, acts around him. He looks absolutely terrified from angering him or saying anything that would offend him. And just like many gods in the early days of Dragon Ball, they always seem to act like a ceiling for Goku to surpass. We're immediately told about how impressive his power is and how it even surpasses as Goku at that point, with King Yemma's power level being stated to be around 1300 in the Tree of Might movie pamphlet, clearly making him even stronger than the most recent enemy that Goku died against, which was Raditz, with his power level being around 1200. King Yemma was also told to actually travel through Snake Way just like Goku will have to in order to meet King Kai. Of course, Goku just like most gods he trained under, it becomes just a matter of time until he surpasses their power. Under King Kai's tutelage, Goku was able to master techniques in a year's time that would have taken him 20 years to master on Earth including the devastating spirit bomb. With significant more authority compared to the previous gods, the King Kai's or King of Worlds, they hold a much more reputable stature in the universe. They live in the other world, a place that is transcendental to the mortal universe, beyond the concepts of space and time themselves. Each Kai holds the authority of each quadrant of the universe. King Kai, the most known figure, is the North Kai. He oversees the North Quadrant. And that's nothing to be snuffed at, as each quadrant in the universe is described in the Daizenshu as a collection of galaxies or nebulas of endless planets and stars. Each Kaio governs that part of the universe. Aside from their stature, the, the Kais themselves are considered exceptional martial artists, with higher than average power levels, with King Kai being stronger than King Yemma with a power level of 3500, already acting as a mountain for Goku to climb. But King Kai also reveals that Goku needs to surpass Vegeta and the Saiyan Saga, who is a lot stronger than he is, and is one of the strongest creatures in the macrocosm at that point of the time, with a whopping power level of 18,000. The other Kaios were never revealed in the manga except South Kai in the manga. The others were only shown in the filler arc after the Cell Games and Goku's death. There's no definitive way to tell which one is stronger as we never saw their abilities or how they fare against each other in a fight. But I'd like to believe they're similar in strength. However, we do know that King Kai is the one who taught Goku the Kaioken and the Genkidama, also known as Spirit Bomb. These two moves became a staple to Goku's movesets. Now, I know this video is supposed to be a ranking of strength and not background. However, I'd like to include a bit of trivia regarding what Toriyama expressed regarding how these gods came to be. In fact, most if not all gods in this list are born from the fruit of the kaiju, the world tree, an unspecified location that serves as the birthplace of the gods. They are chosen by the Shinjins who train these gods and assign them to their appropriate roles. It is said that if one of these gods ceased to exist, then the tree would replace the gods after a period of time. However, each god must earn that right by proving themselves, much like how Kami had to prove himself in order to qualify as Guardian of Earth. Hey! Hey! 
Grand, Grand Kai! This is the Grand Overseeing the four Kais of the galaxy is the Grand Kai, and although the Grand Kai doesn't appear in the original manga, he is still mentioned there. However, he showed up in the anime at the suggestion of the creator of the franchise himself, Akira Toriyama, debuting in the other world tournament arc after the events of the Cell games. By the very nature of his position, we can assume that the Grand Kai is stronger and more powerful than his underlings. This is given by the fact that he is highly respected and regarded as one of the greatest fighters in existence. Not only is the Grand Kai the teacher of the greatest warriors in the universe, he is also one of the strongest warriors himself. However, not much is known about his fighting ability, and due to neglecting his training, it is implied that his power has regressed and slipped a bit in recent times. This was shown when Grand Kai was worried about giving Goku private lessons and says Goku is not ready, in which he appeared to be nervous about. Still, his position as a Grand Kai definitely earns him a higher ranking, no doubt making him stronger than the Quadrant Kais. However, how much stronger he is compared to, let's say, someone like Frieza from the Namek arc? That's up to debate, and I'd like to know what you guys think. Let me know who you guys think is stronger, Grand Kai or Frieza from the Namek Saga. My bet is he that he is probably around that level, if not slightly stronger. If the King Kai is around the thousands in terms of power level, then it's safe to assume the Grand Kai himself is around the millions. Well, are you... are you the Grand Kai? Sorry, no I'm not. I'll tell you who huh? he is. The Supreme Kai. Uh, uh, Supreme Kai? When it comes to the original Dragon Ball Z anime show, there wasn't any higher or more prestigious position in the universe than the Kaioshins. There are beings who live through millions of years and are considered the gods of creation of their respective universe. They are the gods of gods. They are so sacred that their existence is considered myth to some of the lower gods in the mortal realm. They possess godly powers and live outside the main universe macrocosm on the sacred world of the Kais. Contrary to what most people believe. In the English dub, the sacred land of the Kais was simply referred to as a planet. However, the Japanese original dub calls it an entire realm that is transcendental to the mortal universe. As such, the Supreme Kai far outclasses the regular Kais. As while the lower Kais watch over the living world, the Kaioshins transcend the mortal universe and don't concern themselves with normal threats unless said threats could result in the destruction of the entire universe such as Majin Buu. Having said that, these Kaioshins are levels stronger than the previous gods mentioned. Well, not all of them, but take the Supreme Kai of Universe 7 for instance. He is levels above that of Frieza from the Namek Saga, and was one of the strongest creatures in the universe for a short while, making him more powerful than the original Super Saiyan strength Goku first acquired. However, due to the fact that Supreme Kai has never managed to complete his training with the other Kaioshins, meeting their fate against Majin Buu, his power level caps below the second level of Super Saiyan. Goku, Gohan, and Vegeta, even before turning into Super Saiyan, made the god of creation, the most respected figure in the universe, shit his pants. Even when he met Goku for the first time, he was aware of Goku's reputation as the greatest fighter in the universe and admits that he himself doesn't think he can take him on. Upon witnessing the unparalleled strength of Super Saiyan 2, the Supreme Kai realizes that perhaps this power might be enough to unleash a legendary sword that no god before could have managed to wield. This sword was the object that the Elder Kai was sealed by Lord Beerus himself. Speaking of which, while the Elder Kai is by far one of the weakest gods on this list, he makes it up with his immense knowledge and mystic powers of unleashing your true potential. So while he's far weaker than his younger counterpart, he is in fact very useful. He's also probably weaker than Kibito Kai, the attendant of the Kaioshin. We have never seen him fight, but we have seen that he was one-shotted and killed by Dabura before being wished back.
The older Supreme Kais that fought Kid Buu in the past are actually very strong. While the North, East, and West are similar in power, in some ways, Kid Buu has only de deemed the South Kai strong enough to be absorbed. He later on absorbs the Great Lord of Lords, the head of the Supreme Kais who's actually very powerful and forced Majin Buu to absorb him during their battle. The Great Lord or Dai Kai holds the highest prestige among the Supreme Kais, and is also their mentor and most powerful member. However, he isn't the strongest Supreme Kai in the franchise. That title goes to the King Kai prodigy who was promoted to becoming the Supreme Kai. That is Zamasu, who is described to be very powerful. He in fact held his own against a Super Saiyan 2 Goku. Though he was forced to his knees quite easily, Goku praises the god after overpowering him and tells him that he is stronger than the Kaioshin from Universe 7. There are also other Supreme Kais like Gowasu and the other Kais from the other universes, but due to the fact that we have little data and information on how powerful they are, we're just going to assume they're all under Super Saiyan 2 level as well. But if you disagree, feel free to let me know in the comments down below. Sorry Kai, but your luck has run out. Hakai. After 17 years from when Dragon Ball Z has ended during the Kid Buu saga in 1996, Akira Toriyama came back to the game and has rebranded his show with new gods in 2013. These gods themselves are quite different from the previous. While the legendary Super Saiyan form was canonically mentioned to be the most powerful warrior in history, these gods are way, way more powerful. Goku soon learns that when his first encounter with these breed of gods came in the Battle of Gods arc, where Goku's legendary Super Saiyan 3 form gets utterly defeated and one-shotted by a single blow. The gods of destruction are beings who are capable of annihilating the entire universe with their sheer strength alone, having the destructive capacity to deconstruct and erase a character to the molecular level, that they cease to exist entirely and cannot even be wished back. Their status in the universe is number one. However, in spite of the High Kaishins being the strongest beings, that doesn't mean their power cannot be eclipsed. Different gods of destructions are stronger than others. Take Shampa for instance who's marginally weaker than his brother due to the fact that his stamina suffers from being bent out of shape, giving Beerus a slight edge against him. There is also the angels that are assigned for each respective universe whom are a lot more powerful than the gods of destruction. While not necessarily canon to Dragon Ball Super, during the Battle of Gods, the creator of the franchise, Akira Toriyama, has stated that if Beerus was a 10 out of 10 in terms of power in that movie, then Whis would be a 15, making Whis 50% stronger than Beerus. However, it must be noted these quotes are strictly towards the movie and not the anime, nor is it towards the manga, which is written by Toyotaro, as even the manga scales Beerus differently than the anime. In the anime, one can make the argument that characters like Broly, Goku's Ultra Instinct, and Gogeta Blue can rival Beerus if not exceed his power. This is based on the fact that Jiren himself in the anime and the manga is stated to be stronger than his own god of destruction. Therefore, it is possible for a mortal to be stronger than a god of destruction. Now, I'm not saying Jiren or Broly are stronger than Beerus. In fact, it is very difficult to scale Beerus in Dragon Ball Super due to his power fluctuating throughout and also scales differently in each continuity. Take Battle of Gods for example, it was stated that Beerus used 70% of his power against an inexperienced Goku who just acquired Super Saiyan God. He later on in Resurrection F acquires Super Saiyan Blue and still isn't stronger than Beerus. In the manga, Beerus absolutely demolishes a perfected Super Saiyan Blue Vegeta. He is also implied many times throughout that he is both stronger than Goku's Ultra Instinct and Vegeta's Ultra Ego. However, that is yet to be seen in the anime as it is more implied that Goku has surpassed the gods and became a low tier angel. As Ultra Instinct was conceived as the form which even the gods of destruction struggles to enter. This was shown in the manga when Beerus briefly enters Ultra Instinct when fighting the other gods but couldn't manage to hold on to it for very long. This isn't to downplay 
Beerus, not at all. In fact, the author of the manga Toyotaro loves Beerus so much and doesn't shy away from absolutely glazing for the overpowered cat god. So even when Beerus was mentioned to lose in an arm wrestling competition against one of the other gods, I would still place him as the strongest god of destruction for the mere fact that his power in the manga is acting like a moving pole depending on the plot. The stronger Goku gets, the more powerful Beerus becomes, it seems. Some people have their headcanons and theories, but the simple answer is that Goku isn't ready yet to surpass Beerus from a narrative perspective. It will happen for sure, but we are still waiting. But since I'm grouping characters in one tier, Vegeta and Goku in their Super Saiyan Blue forms would be below the Gods of Destruction level and way above the Supreme Kai's. Their Ultra Instinct and Ultra Ego form, respectively, would be God of Destruction tier level, as Jiren himself has proven that you can surpass the powers of the God of Destruction. This was proven in the anime and it is a fact. Even Whis confirms it. The God of Destruction of Universe 11 as well admits it. Therefore, Goku mastering Ultra Instinct during the Moro arc places him above most gods of destruction. He also gets more powerful in the Granola arc. So while Goku can be debated to be a low tier angel along Vegeta, especially when factoring in his performance in the Tournament of Power, which saw him climb to new heights that made all gods stand up in respect to his fighting abilities. However, I'd say we should keep Goku and Vegeta in the God of Destruction tier until we see Dragon Ball Super anime coming back. Let me know in the comments section down below. Do you think Goku is above this level or not yet? And if he isn't, do you think he will ever ascend past it? Angels are the attendants to the gods of destruction of each universe. Although angels live longer than Haikaishans and are possibly even immortal, they will cease to function should a Haikaishan die and as a consequence will remain inactive until a new one appears. While angels usually do not directly involve themselves in the affairs of the universe, they are not, however, above indirect methods such as training mortals Queen Vegeta, because angels are unequivocally the strongest beings in the entire Dragon Ball franchise franchise aside from the number one on this list. This is mainly because these beings are always in a perpetual state of ultra instinct. Unlike mortals such as Goku can only use the technique by tying it to a transformation, it is the angels natural state of being as their bodies are attuned to the techniques automatically, meaning they can always use it without thought even out of combat situation. This gives incredible advantage over any opponent they face. They're also very powerful as evident with Whis who one shot a Beerus when he was on a rampage destroying planets after eating the wasabi. In fact, Akira Toriyama has explicitly stated in an interview during the Battle of Gods movie that if Beerus is a 10 out of 10 in terms of power, then Whis would be a 15. This is also not even mentioning the plethora of abilities that an angel possesses, from their immense knowledge of everything in the universe to their abilities of manipulating time and space, reversing time and being able to travel in speeds that are infinitely faster than light. Additionally, they could also bring people back to life should they choose. Like every tier in this list, there are many angels in the Dragon Ball franchise, some stronger than others. The weakest angel we have seen would be Mears. He seems to be one of the youngest angels, but despite that, he's very powerful and trained Goku to ascend to a more perfected state of Ultra Instinct. Before his death, after using his angel power in a battle against Moro, he states to Goku that should he perfect Ultra Instinct, he would not lose to Moro, or anyone in fact. Now certainly this may indicate that Goku's angel tier, and that may be true. However, I wouldn't use this as confirmation that he is stronger than Beerus as of yet. At least not in the manga, as Tuatara often retcons Beerus' power and uses him as a moving flag. Also, Tuatara just likes Beerus a lot. Apart from the Grand Priest, the other angel seems to be close in strength. There is no way for me to tell you who is stronger as we never saw them perform against each other. While Varos has stated herself to be a little stronger than Whis a thousand years ago as she is older and trained him at one point. Whis seems to disagree and believe that was in the past and he's stronger right now, so it's up for debate on who's really stronger. But regardless on who you think is more powerful, I think the difference is minuscule as is with the rest of the angels. However, 
The Grand Priest is a much different story. He is a character who is canonically has the highest power level in existence. He is number one and is the father of all angels. He has been mentioned by Whis in the manga to have the highest battle power in existence. His mastery of Ultra Instinct also far exceeds Whis himself. In fact, he's so strong that he managed to block Beerus's punch with a single finger. The angels are very powerful creatures and to be honest, I'm not sure if Goku and Vegeta will ever measure up to their level of power. Perhaps down the line when the story progresses, but as of now, the closest Saiyan from the main timeline to reach an angel level would be the fusions of Goku and Vegeta. It's been stated many times in the movies that should Goku and Vegeta work together, they can overtake Lord Beerus. Jiren is also a character who surpasses his own God of Destruction's universe, and Broly was also mentioned to have power comparable to a God of Destruction. Also, Gogeta wiped the floor with him without using Ultra Instinct. So it's safe to say that the theoretical Vegito and Gogeta Ultra Instinct or Ultra Ego would be around Angel level. Perhaps not as strong as the Grand Priest, but I think enough to make someone like Whis get a little more serious in battle. I think this nasty should be cleaned up, right? Yes, it should. I'll destroy it. Ugh. Guys, what are you waiting for? Launch it now! All of existence, go away! <laughs> The Omni King, otherwise referred to Zeno, is without a doubt the most powerful and highest ranking being in the universe. Though he simply looks like a cuddly plushie and acts somewhat childish, Zeno is in fact very terrifying. He stands as the king of, well, everything, preceding over the entire multiverse. Even Beerus and Shampa cower in fear when he arrives during their tournament. Whis also knows not to disappoint Zeno. Though he is not a warrior, Zeno has the powers of an all-powerful god. Beerus has stated that the Omni King does not fight, which perhaps explains why he loves watching fights. However, his power does not lie in martial arts, but instead in a power beyond comprehension. He could effortlessly wipe out universes with little to no effort. If you consider Beerus to be a ceiling that Goku must break through, then Whis would be the sky and the Omni King is the infinite space. However, to be fair, like we said, the Omni King is not a character for Goku to surpass in terms of story purposes or fighting experience. But before I shout out the final Galdi character in this video, I would like to mention the attendance of the Omni King. While they aren't confirmed to be gods themselves, they are however a pair of bodyguards that rarely speak, and also act in unison with each other and stand in a very disciplined posture, motionlessly hovering above ground for most of the time. Since they are the bodyguards, one could logically infer that they must be very powerful. We have only seen very few feats performed by the guards. For example, the attendants seem to travel with the Omni King, being able to travel from Zeno's place to the Nameless Planet in such a short time. Compare that to Whis, who is the fastest being in Universe 7, it took him two days to complete the trip. In Dragon Ball, usually speed and power are directly correlated to each other unless specified otherwise, such as the use of a technique. Moreover, the attendants serve the Omni King directly, meaning their hierarchy could technically mean they are more powerful than your regular angel. They are definitely strong, but how strong, we aren't really sure perhaps on the level of an angel that is close to the Grand Priest. Again, not much, if at all, is discussed on how strong they are. But since we have seen Mr. Popo being stronger than literally the God of Earth, and also Whis, an angel stronger than a God of Destruction, then I wouldn't be too surprised if the guards are somewhat one of the strongest beings in existence. But you tell me, how strong do you think the attendants are? So, I want to address this. I started making this video before the unfortunate passing away of the great Akira Toriyama, who is, as you know, the writer and father of Dragon Ball. I already finished the script of this video before the news came out, so I'd like to honor the man who gave us all these memories and created a huge impact on our lives. As I would like to shout out Toribot as the undisputed strongest and highest ranking of any Dragon Ball god. While we never saw Toribot in the actual show, there were a few nice references in the TV series as well as the manga of his existence. Toribot is by all sense and purposes is the author himself. He has, or rather unfortunately, 
used to have the power to erase, rewrite, and retcon story elements. He has also possessed boundless strength and infinite to relevant speed. His only weakness was his prone nature to forget things, as well as his editors rejecting some of his earlier ideas. However, he used to make it up with abundance of comedy and joy that he has created for fans all over the world. Thank you, Akira Toriyama. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video like I have, and I also realized that the new Dragon Ball series will be airing very soon, which will naturally introduce and contain new gods. As you know, Dragon Ball never fails to raise the ceiling. As a result, my list may be prone to some changes depending on what stage in the future you're watching this video. So please make sure to look at the date of when I make these ranking videos, as I could be missing some information that never came out. However, that doesn't mean my rankings are inherently perfect. I'm prone to making mistakes like anyone else, but I'm willing to listen to any feedback. Having said that, make sure to comment down below and also watch my other ranking videos. Also, please, for the people who never watched my latest video on how strong is Zeno Goku, please make sure to watch that video and give it a like. It's a criminally underrated video in my opinion. But anyways guys, like I always say, please remember to like, comment, and subscribe. Peace.